So the incoming Republican majority in the House promising to investigate Hunter Biden, the president's brother, and ultimately the president himself over their business dealings. What can we expect to learn from that? I want to bring in the laptop repairman whose new book, American Injustice, is out tomorrow. Details what happened after he discovered Hunter Biden's infamous laptop. John Paul Isaac is with me now. Sir, how you doing? Good morning to you. And uh, we've spoken before. Welcome back here. A couple things I just want to update our viewers on a couple. Good uh, you worked for Apple for six years, and then you started your own shop. You fixed Apple products and uh, Mac computers. Were you the one who was at the counter when Hunter Biden dropped off his laptop? Unfortunately, yes. I, I'm, I'm sole proprietor, so uh, mm -hmm. I was the only one in the shop when he came in. Did, refresh my memory. Did you recognize that it was him at the moment? <laughs> You know, I, I really never cared enough about the Bidens to pay attention to what the offspring looked like. So I did not recognize him. It wasn't until the check-in process when he announced who he was. Uh, and then also, I kind of put the pieces together when I saw the Bo Biden Foundation sticker on one of the laptops. Mm. Was that immediate or was that over time? Uh, it was It was kind of... Uh, you know, it, it was at first I thought when I saw the Bo Biden sticker that this was actually Hunter's deceased brother's laptops, because often is the case that a customer will come in with equipment that belonged to a deceased loved one and they want to get the data off. So I figured this was no different. It wasn't until the next day when I realized that the uh, person that came in my shop was also the person that started a lot of the homemade porn. Wow. Uh, OK, yes. Um, and you quote an FBI agent as saying, it's our experience that nothing ever happens to people who don't talk about these things. What do you remember from that conversation? I mean, basically, they were saying, don't go anywhere with this conversation. Well, and I, I kind of was asking for it, because uh, first off, when the agent showed up to my shop with a subpoena, I, I don't think and those FBI agents had ever seen somebody so excited to be handed a subpoena in their life. I was overjoyed. And in the excitement when the agents were leaving after they confiscated all of Hunter's belongings, uh, I made a comment to Agent Mike. I said, don't worry, lads. I'll, I'll, when I write the book, I'll change your names. And that's when Agent Mike turned around and told me that in their experience, nothing ever happens to people that don't talk about these things, which was kind of chilling. Uh, but out of respect, I did change Agent Mike's name in the book. Wow. Oh, wow. OK. So here's Jim Jordan just last week on this, OK, on what we might get to eventually. Listen. So we've went from it wasn't his laptop and it was Russian disinformation to, oh, whatever was in there didn't affect the president's business dealings, even though he was involved, even though the laptop was real, even though it wasn't disinformation. We've, that's how far we've come. So I think, that, that, I think there are all kinds of questions that need to be answered, and we're, we're determined to get there. So I don't know how far they get. Um, they're going to try. What do you think we should know? What do you think we should learn next? Well, uh, I have been doing everything I can and working uh, with my legal team and uh, Congress, members of Congress, which I'm delighted to say all of them that I've been working with got reelected. So uh, to make sure that they have genuine, clean and pure copies of the laptop. Also, every interaction I had with the FBI, I've sent over to Congress. Uh, there's two fronts that I see. I see holding the FBI accountable for colluding with our mainstream and social media to block a story, a real story with real consequences, and also get to the bottom of what the Biden family was up to when uh, Joe Biden was vice president. And I, I think that uh, we have the people in Congress now. They have the resources and the tools. And I'm hoping that uh, we're going to get some accountability. Mm. Uh, uh, last point I would add there. You uh, named one and two. I'm, here's what strikes me. You say American people should feel comfortable going to authorities without fear of retribution or retaliation. It, is it your experience that this was retaliation? You know, I have been dealing with retaliation uh, from multiple fronts for the past two years when what I did was leaked to the country. Um, I'm, I'm expecting it, and I'm going to expect it to continue. Uh, it's, it's just when people are threatened, they fight back. Well, wow. and the book is out tomorrow, John Paul Mac Isaac. We will speak again as this investigation unfolds, and we'll see how far they get or do not get sometimes as the way Congress works. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.